There are two ways to set the Ethernet IP address and subnet mask on this device. Probably the most straightforward would be to remove the control head off of this drive and underneath the top of it there is a... So this is one that I've removed and you can see the USB connector. That would be probably the most straightforward as you can plug it right into your laptop, plug and play, open up CCW and then go into the device directly through the USB port on your computer from CCW and set the IP address. However, I'm going to show you the more difficult way to do it, but the way that always works whether you have a laptop software or not. What we're going to do is we need to go set the C128, 29, 30, 31, 132, 133, 34, 35, and 36. So we need to go set parameters and they are C129 through 136. So if I escape out and then go up, there's P, T, there's C. So I'll select and I need 129. Twenty-nine, select enter, and now I. This is my Ethernet IP address. In other words, this is an octet, and it's zero through two fifty-five. So it's three digits, and I typically use one hundred, one hundred, one hundred, and then something. I'm going to say select and enter. So I'm going to increment this. I can go down to 255 and this might be an easier way to do it and then run this down to zero, select, run this down to zero, select, and run this down to one, enter. Okay, now I'm going to escape out and I'm going to go up to 130. So we start at 129. This is 130. So we're going to select that. And I'm going to go down to 255 and then run that down to zero. Select. Run it down to zero. Select. Run that down to one and enter. So I've got two of them set now, so I'm going to escape back out to here. I'm going to go up to 131 and I'm going to go down to the top of the list, which is 255. Then I'm going to run that down to zero. Select. Run that down to zero. Select. Knock that down one to 100. Press enter. Okay, now I'm going to escape. I'm going to go up to 132, enter, and I'm going to go down to 255. I'll run this down to, I think I'll run it down to 9, and this up to 9. Whoops. <laughs> Run that one down to 9, select, run this one up to 9, run this one down to 9, Enter, select, go to that one and run that down to zero. 
and enter. So now I've got an IP address of 100, 100, 100, 99. And this is very cumbersome. You see I made a few mistakes doing it. Hit the button too many times. Now I want to go to the subnet mask, which is 133. We'll do enter, select, select there, up to 133, enter, and I'm going to go down twice to 255 and enter. I'm going to escape up to 134, enter, down to 255, enter, escape up to 135, enter, down to 255, enter, and then escape out. I set my subnet mask to 255, 255, 255, 0. Every Ethernet NIC, Network Interface Controller, has a unique MAC ID that's multiple access carrier the world over. So every single device that has an Ethernet port on it has a MAC ID that is unique throughout the whole world. The MAC ID is the actual address of the device. An IP address is something that is either assigned as a fixed value or is acquired through DHCP or boot P, meaning that if it has a MAC ID and it's set up for DHCP or boot P, it throws its MAC ID out on the network and a server, if there is one, We'll see that MAC ID, and, and if it's list, it has that MAC ID is legitimate on that network, it will then assign it an IP address. So IP addresses are volatile, they're temporary with uh, industrial automation equipment. We tend to have a isolated network, and we use whatever IP address structure that we want. Well, we just set the drive to 100, 100, 100, with a subnet mask of 255.255.0. Now a subnet mask mask the portion of the IP that is the network address or the address of the network that the node is on. So 255.255.255 means the first three octets because 255 is all ones in an 8-bit octet that signifies that the first three octets is the address of the network itself. And then the fourth octet is the address of the node on that network. So let's go to RS Links, RS Who, and we will open up Ethernet IP. And down there on the bottom, you see 100, 100, 100, 99. Now, if the drive wasn't there, or if there wasn't a device there, then you would see red X's. Always remember in RS links, when you see a red X, that means that this Lynx driver, this Ethernet IP driver, has seen that address in the past. And a red X means I saw it in the past, but I don't see it now. If it were every address possible and had red X's through it, you'd have a mess on this screen. And I can actually remove those. I could click on one of those and say remove and it would it would remove it from the I've seen this in the past list until it saw it again and it added back in the list. Okay, so there's our drive. We can right click on it. We can go to module configuration, device properties, and you see that it says PowerFlex 525 uh, one P single phase, 110 volt, half horsepower. And there's the revision level. And that verifies that we can see our drive at 100, 100, 100, 99. Now, in order for my computer to see that, I had to set up my Ethernet port with an address of 100, 100, 100, something with a subnet mask of 255, 255, 255, 0. We can see right here that I assigned my laptop 
100, 100, 100, 100. I always do that. I did that in the beginning because it was easy to remember, and I just never stopped. Now, someone actually owns that IP address somewhere in the world, okay? But because I'm not going out on the Internet with 100, 100, 100, 100, I can have anything I want in my private network as long as I don't connect it into the big network. My whole purpose for showing you this video is for you to know how to set your IP address and subnet mask from the membrane keypad on the front of the drive. Because if you can't get the top off to get the USB plug in there or you don't have USB, you don't have a laptop, one sure-fired way of setting up your drive is to set up the IP address from the front faceplate. We'll see you in the next video.